Chardon, hey, true crime fans. Welcome back to another episode of Chardon, hey, true crime. I'm your host, Dakota. With me, as always, is the lovely Kate. That's me. That is her. And tonight, as you may have noticed, we are doing things just a little bit differently. As I'm sure you are aware, uh, normally we do everything live. We put the show on live so that you can see everything happen as we're as we're doing it and you don't miss any of the regularly scheduled insanity uh but tonight we are doing things a little bit differently we are not filming live this evening uh we unfortunately had some more scheduling issues and decided to film this so as of right now when we are filming it is actually thursday when we should have filmed this episode live Um, you will be seeing it on Friday, and we hope you enjoy this new way of us doing this, and we hope you still enjoy the content that we bring you, because we are still going to bring you the same usual us freaking out about these people being fucking idiot content. (laughs) How long have I been texting you? We can do that at any time. Every, I mean, how long have I been texting you about these fucking idiots, Kate? Oh, God. It, it's felt like years. It's been probably days. Yeah. Because I've been still doing all of the research and reading about these fucking assholes and scouring the internet to find information about these guys. And I hate them. I hate them so much. Like, and the thing is, Vargas is still alive. And Ew. we're going to, we're going to get into his life and everything. Fairly shortly. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this fucking idiot is still alive. Um, super not excited about talking about what this moron is up to these days. But let's talk about what he was up to in the 90s. So when we left off, Mark Dikonis was burning down churches. And all of those Norwegian black metal fucks were off being little fucks murdering people and, and like I said, burning down churches because, you know, they thought that it was like brutal or heavy or whatever. They thought they were so edgy. Yeah. They were basically the uh, black metal version of fuckboys, I think. They're like, I think we agreed that they were like the OG edgelords. Mm hmm. I will definitely agree to that statement. These kids fucking sucked. But in January 1993, an article in one of Norway's biggest newspaper, Bergen Tinde, brought the black metal scene into the media spotlight. Two friends of Varg's interviewed him and then brought the interview to the newspaper hoping that they would print it. And in the anonymous interview, Varg went by his um, alias, Count Verschnack. Or Count Grishnack, that's it. Count Grishnack, which is a Tolkien reference, actually. Tolkien didn't deserve that. They had to drag Tolkien down here with them. Yeah... It's some fucking bullshit. I mean, uh, so, yeah. Grishnak is, um, he was, like, the head of the Orc army. Or, like, the Urukai army. Uh, the Urukais are, like, a subspecies of the Orcs. Um, it's, like, a whole thing in the second Lord of the Rings movie. Um, Which wasn't even made yet. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know. It's these guys are going off of the fucking books. Like they're like nerding out over like the Lord of the Rings books. And listen, I've read the Lord of the Rings books. They're fucking hard to read. Okay. Yeah. Like they really are. Um I've read The Hobbit, I've read the Lord of the Rings books, and I've read uh, the Sermillion and Yeah. It's tough. Um but anyways. So he calls himself Count Grishnak because, you know, so edgy. Ugh, I hate it. Yeah. Uh, So in this interview, Count Grishnak claims to have burned the churches and killed a man in Lillehammer. Now, as you remember from 
the other day's episode, uh, it wasn't actually Varg who killed the guy in Lillehammer. It was his friend um, who, you know, did actually kill a man in Lillehammer. But, you know, these idiots are going to... Sorry. These idiots are going to take... They're going to take all the credit for something that someone else did while they can just to make themselves look better to the media. Which is really funny because this isn't the kind of thing that would make them look better. It just makes them look like worse people, which is what they want, I guess. Like, I guess. So, Bjorgen's Tenden, Tenden, journalist, Finn Bjorn Tonder, set up a meeting with Count Grishnak with the help from the friends. And the journalists were summoned to an apartment and reported and reportedly warned that they would be shot if the police were called. Which I mean, it's it's like the 1990s, bro. Like, who the fuck has cell phones? Where are they gonna be like, oh yeah, hey, can I borrow your landline? I have to call someone really quick. It's it's not the police, I swear. <laughs> Just, I just need to call my sister real quick. It's very important. I can't Krishna say yes, you can call your sister. <laughs> Don't look at me though. I'm wearing a cape. I'm, I'm wearing a cloak that I definitely didn't have my mother make. <laughs> so that I could, you know, do some Lord of the Rings LARPing in the park. Did uh, did she make the cape out of her drapes? You're throwing Marvel into the bus too right now, honestly? Yes, but I'm doing that. They're not doing that. Okay, that's fine. Does mother know you wear as her drapes? Yeah, mother, mother sewed the drapes for me into this really awesome cape that you see me wearing right now. <laughs> fucking stupid so anyways uh their vicarious and his companions told the journalists that they had burnt the churches or that they had known who had done it and they said that the attacks would continue they claimed to be devil worshipers and said our intention is to spread fear and devilry that is why we are telling this to bergen's tinden they then gave the journalists details about the arsons that hadn't been con- that hadn't been released to the press. So BT spoke with the police before publishing it, who confirmed those details. So the article was published on the 20th of January, and it was the front page of the BT. It was headlined, We Lit the Fires, and included a photo of Vikernis, his face mostly hidden, holding two large knives. <laughs> Yes, we started the fire. We were really happy when we burned the churches. <laughs> it's on. It's, it's, I did. Oh god, it's so stupid. And like, I actually, I found the picture that they used. I found a picture. I don't know. There's like a couple pictures of Varg. Uh, where his face is like mostly hidden and he's holding knives. So I'm going to show what I think is likely the picture that they used. Um, not 100% on this one, but it's so fucking funny. I kind of hope that it is the one that they used. <laughs> right? <laughs> I really hope that's the one that they used. Oh god. See, when you said it was funny, I was expecting mm-hmm. like oh god. I, I know it said that like his face was mostly covered, but I was low-key expecting something kind of like You were expecting something what? I was expecting something kind of like Oh right. <laughs> Where he just looks like way too fucking excited, but like that's know, even right? funnier because it's just kind of like, hmm. It's just like he was just caught unawares. Look how serious I am hiding behind my hair with these knives. Oh, I just stand like this all the time. 
<laughs> just mm, yes, me and my knives. Just unzip, unzip that just a teensy bit. A little bit more. And then just like just pull it up over your eye a little bit. Perfect. I'm filming. Wish I knew how to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, so yeah, this is it's still gonna be uncut for all of you guys, so you're still gonna see that fun stuff. Anyways, <laughs> so <sighs> by the time the article were printed, Vikernes had already actually been arrested, and the police found him by going to an address printed on a Burzum flyer. Oh my god. Yeah. I know, right? What a it's, dumbass. It's, I know, right? It's so dumb. But, I mean, that's just, you know, these guys are really fucking stupid. Anyways, so... Um... <clears throat> According to Vikernes, the anonymous interview was planned by himself and Euronymous. The goal, he says, was to scare people, promote black matter, and get more customers for Helvete. At the time, Burzum was also about to release the Afghan mini album. Some of the other scene members were also arrested and questioned, but they were all released for lack of evidence. Jordan Inga Tunsberg of Hades said that the interview had grave consequences for the rest of the scene and that they did not know he was going to talk to the press as he had said nothing. He added that they became bloody angry and he, Tunsberg, was pissed off. These guys are all just mad at each other for like, I don't know, they're just being stupid. It's all that angst, angst, angst. Oh my god, right? Seriously, these kids are basically Harry Potter in that angst Potter Puppet Pals video. Angst, 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 angst. Yeah, that's literally them. Ugh, so fucking annoying. Yeah, so anyways, Norwegian magazine Rock Fury published an interview with Vikernes in February 1993. In it, he said of the prison system, it's much too nice here. It's not hell at all. In this country, prisoners get a bed, toilet, and shower. It's completely ridiculous. I asked the police to throw me in a real dungeon and also encourage them to use violence. He was released in March for lack of evidence. Jesus Christ. So this is a dumb question. Is he okay? Are we frozen? Sorry about that. Seems like we uh, lost the connection there for a second. You good? Whoopsie you boopsie. Me? Yeah, right? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Very quiet, okay. but I can hear you. That's weird. My computer's turned up all the way. I don't know why it would be so quiet. I don't know. Well, hopefully the audience will be able to hear me. But anyways, uh, yeah, no. Oh, I'm so sad. I'm not being oppressed at all. Why aren't the guards trying to beat me with their nightsticks? <laughs> Just, I don't understand. Why am I not being tortured for my axe? 
Why am I not a war criminal? Why aren't they beating me like in a Vietnamese prison camp? Take me to a dungeon, the real dungeon, you know? Why aren't these guards trying to like rape me or something? Where are the See, that's, that's the crux of it. The crux of it is he watched way too much guys in prison porn. He watched way too much Oz. Right. <laughs> I don't understand. Where's Chris Maloney? Where's Chris Maloney's penis? <laughs> why and why why is everyone so Norwegian and pale and skinny like me? <laughs> In this Norwegian prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, right. <laughs> Why is everyone in this Norwegian prison so Norwegian? <laughs> what I wouldn't give for a, what I wouldn't give for a tall, dark, handsome stranger. I mean, they're all tall, but nobody is dark. <laughs> they're very handsome, but they're all very pale. Why is this happening to me? <laughs> Why is everyone in this Norwegian prison a vampire? <laughs> Why do they all look like the Scars guards? I mean, I know they're from Sweden, but like, same thing. And I know they're all hot, but they all look the same here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, none of them look like Alexander Skarsgård. They all look like the one from Vikings who looks really weird. <laughs> they all look like the Pennywise one. <laughs> now, have you seen Gustav Skarsgård? Like, don't get me I mean, listen, he's a Skarsgård, you know, but like at the same time, I'm just sort of like, ah, are you sure? <laughs> I know she is gonna jump down my throat for that comment, but she knows how I, I, she knows how I feel about that character. <laughs> I'm gonna just show you a picture so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah. So there. That scars card. Like a distant cousin, maybe? <laughs> no, he's literally, he's like the son of Stellan Skarsgård. That he adopted? <laughs> That's mean. He's, he's a fantastic actor. He's an amazing actor. But there's not really much of a family resemblance. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, anything, I'm not saying anything mean about him. I'm just saying I don't see the resemblance to his hot brother. <laughs> By which you, of course, mean Alexander. Yes. Yeah. As I mean, look, everybody's all obsessed with Bill Scar's guard, and I'm just sort of like, mm, he looks like a frog. <laughs> He looks like the frog Tom Holland keeps in his mouth. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, that's so mean. Oh, my God. For the record, we love the Skarsgård family so much. <laughs> Not a word of this is meant... In any in any amount of like seriousness, like, yeah, I can't. I can't this think is literally, of all in jest. It's midnight while we're filming this, and we've both been drinking, <laughs> and I've been up since five ish too. And yeah, so you know, mm -hmm. the brain cell is barely here right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, we're it's very. This is not the most ideal time for us to be filming and yet at the same time I feel like it makes it funnier so we're sorry slash you're welcome 
<laughs> so anyways, in 1993, animosity arose between Euronymous and Deaconess. After the Bergen's Tendon episode, Euronymous decided to shut Helvete as it began to draw the attention of the police and media. Just imagining Euronymous, just like, we, you guys, we have decided to close hell of a day. Aaron's like, no, why, you're on a miss? Well, it's because you remember how, you know, me and, and Darg and some of the other guys, we were burning down all those churches. Just, oh, yeah, yeah, what about it? Yeah, so uh, it turns out the police and the media found out about it, too. Oh, no, how did they find out about it? Was it from all your bragging? Uh, yeah, it was partially the bragging, but also it's because uh, the Varg uh, decided to do an interview as Count Grishnak. The Lord of the Rings character? Well, the Lord of the Rings character's name was Grishnak, actually, but he wasn't an act. Actually, Grishnak wasn't a count. Grishnak was an orc. He was the leader of the Orkai army. And they interviewed him? No, they interviewed Varg. Okay, I didn't, I thought, I was real confused. I thought that he was like a real person for a second. And I was just like, how did he know about burning the churches? No, it's Varg. Varg decided to call himself Count Grishnak. What a dumbass! I know, right? And, like, I understood when they were doing anonymous interviews and saying that they were the ones who did the burning of the churches. But at the same time, like, they shouldn't have actually used their real names. Yeah, who does that? Why would you use your real name? Yeah, well, I mean, I understand that they were trying to, like, sell the Burr's Room album. Which, you know, would be good because then we can make some money. But I, d- I don't know. Well, shit. I, d- I did not say it was okay for them to do this. So I'm afraid um, one of you boys has to go back and get the necklace that I made out of dead skull and bring it back to me because he doesn't deserve it anymore. Ooh, he's going to fight you. Tooth and nail on that one. That doesn't make sense because this the necklace is made out of skull. Teeth are part of the skull. It's not the part of the skull that I used to make the necklace. Go get this back from Varg. <laughs> oh my god, the indignation. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like <laughs> totally see that conversation happening though right (laughs) it's like oh god i've been doing so much research on these fucking idiots i feel like i know them and i'm just like oh god i can get into this character way too easily oh if only it was just a character god this person actually existed tragic Anyways, like, listen, most of the time I have a lot of sympathy for, like, these murder victims and stuff. I I don't have that here. No, not really. Yeah, anyways. So, uh, on the night of August 10th, 1993, Vikernes stabbed Euronymous to death at his apartment in Oslo. The murder was initially blamed on Swedish black metal meddlers by the media. It had been speculated that the murder was the result of a power struggle, a financial dispute over Burzum records, because Euronymous did actually owe Vikernes a large sum of royalty payments, or an attempt at outdoing a recent stabbing in Lillehammer, uh, the one that had been committed by uh, Faust. Remember the one from uh, last episode? Oh, where, right, 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 right. Where Faust killed that guy in the park. Mm-hmm. So they were like, oh, maybe he was actually just trying to, like, kill Euronymous because a Faust kills that guy. 
Oh, yeah. And, you know, he could never have somebody outdo him with his horrible no. criminal acts. No, no, no. It, it has, Vikernitz has to be the one who's on charge. Your Anonymous in the background just, am I a fucking joke to you? Everybody. I'm, yes. in, I'm in charge. I'm in charge of the black metal scene. They're just like, of course you are. Yes, you are. Yeah, I am. Don't forget it. Here you go. Here's your black star that says in charge. Thank you. I was looking for this. Your little sheriff of black metal badge. Okay, so like, why is it that I like, I just feel like this is just turned into like what we do in the shadows, but like with black. Because that's what I was doing, too. Yep. Okay, but, like, seriously, though, if they're going to make a movie about, like, all of this shit, which they did, uh, based off of Lords of Darkness, which, as we know, is a terrible fucking book, uh, or Lords of Chaos, or whatever the fuck that book was called, that terrible fucking book that was written. Anyways, they made a movie, and instead of basing it off of any of the other books that came out around the time, they based it off of the worst book that all of the musicians are like, this is a terrible fucking book. They make this movie, and I'm going to show the trailer in a little bit, because it's fucking hilarious. Um, but, uh, but like, what they really should do is they should just, like, make a movie that's basically what we do in the shadows, <laughs> but, like, the Norwegian black metal scene at the time. <laughs> Just like they sit down to do interviews, just be all alone. My name is dead. I call myself that because I want to be dead. I live with your animus, and he he makes me want to to be dead. And then you're not. Was it your animus who who we think was in love with dead? Yeah. Yeah, you're all, like it pans over to Euronymous. Just I pestered him because I hate him for making me fall in love with him. <laughs> Euronymous is Norwegian, not German. Yeah, my my accent keeps like going all over the place. Yeah, you kind of went into like you you kind of went into a uh, deacon. <laughs> right there. Yeah. A little <laughs> I'm pretty sure I keep like dipping into Russian a little bit too. It's just I'm all yeah. over the place. So you totally sounded like Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> when you are made a vampire, you get really sexy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> doing the genetic European accent. European accent. <laughs> Nandor has dark hair and an accent. Have you slept with him? I can't believe. <laughs> I was seriously just I I I like to push dead because he gets really worked up, and when he gets worked up, um, then. He's really hot. What? No, not hot. No, he he is. He gets really mad, and it's really funny to see him get mad. And then he lays in bed for like days, and and sometimes I think, uh, you know what would make him really mad if I were to go and and get into bed with him, and and then we were to cuddle. That that would be a really good joke. Right then. Good joke. That would be a really good joke, right then. <laughs> just, I just, he would, I bet he would absolutely hate that. If you're enjoying this content, feel free to support us down below. <laughs> If you like terrible people done all of what we do in the shadows, please help <laughs> to bring you this content. Hey, you know what? I mean, if 
if if we get enough money in our Patreon, we will start to do skits of these people. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Now I really hope we get enough money because I want to do that. I want to do that so bad. Right? Right? Who do you want to be? Do you want to be Euronymous or do you want to be dead? I mean, just as a concept, as a general concept, I want to be dead. But <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Euronymous would be good for me because I could do the whole needy and pretending I don't actually care and hiding my feelings thing. And I'll be dead. Just I would like to die because I truly believe that I I am not a part of this this earth. Sometimes I I leave the house to get away from Euronymous, and I sleep in the woods. And then I'll wake up in bed with Euronymous. And then uh, sometimes I wake up and I'm in the bed and Euronymous is there and I'm like, how did I get here? Just Did I drink last night? I don't remember drinking. <laughs> so anyways, yeah. Uh, if you enjoy this content and you want to see more of us being uh, the insane horrible, horrible people that are the Norwegian black metal uh, community, from the 90s uh feel free to throw some money in that patreon that like, real you know, niche little window <laughs> yeah a real niche little window i mean honestly i feel like we could do like these kinds of skits with just about anyone that we've covered honestly yeah <laughs> the interviewing gary ridgeway just <laughs> I, I put them i put them all in the same area because i hope that the police would notice but they didn't and then I, I weighed them down. And then I, I would wait sometimes on, on the riverbed to see if anybody would notice me. And, and a couple of times I would see cars driving by and I'd, I'd wave my arms. And I'd be, oh no, I, I'm out here dumping a body. And then they just wave back. It was so. They, they, yeah, no idea. Don't know why that happened. They, they, there was one time, it was a guy driving a Corvette, and the Corvette broke down on the bridge as I was weighing the body, and he yelled to me and said, hey, do you have any tools? And I said, well, yeah, I've got some tools. Let me just finish weighing down this dead hooker <clears throat> that I murdered. And he just laughed. He laughed, and he said, okay, well, hurry up and come help me fix my car. So I did. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I've been drinking for way too long. <laughs> Support the Patreon so, if you want us to see shit like that. If you want to see yeah, shit exactly. like that. Yeah, exactly. Support us on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Chardon. Hey, TC. So, anyways. Um, so, Vikramis <laughs> claims. Vikramis claims that he killed Euronymous in self-defense. Because, you know, Euronymous totally seems like the type to start killing people randomly. I mean, he pushed people towards it, but he never actually, like, I don't think that he was really going to kill Varg. He yeah, says probably. that Euronymous, he says that Euronymous had plotted to stun him with an electroshock weapon, tie him up, and torture him to death while videotaping the event. Vikernes explained if he was talking about it to ev ever everybody and anybody i wouldn't have taken it seriously but he just told a select group of friends and one of them told me he said euronymous planned to use a meeting about an unsigned contract to ambush him and on the night of the murder vikernes and snorri black from the roof drove from bergen to euronymous's apartment at oh god toyngata in oslo Blackthorn allegedly stood in the stairwell smoking while Vikernes went to Euronymous's apartment on the fourth floor. Vikernes said that he met Euronymous at the door and handed him a signed contract. 
But when he stepped forward and confronted Euronymous, Euronymous panicked and kicked him in the chest. I don't really see Euronymous being that agile. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't. Yeah, that's a that that's a pretty quick move to like kick someone in the chest. Like you like there's no way to like unless you're like hella fast and you catch them completely off guard, you're not gonna do that and then like bounce back from it. I the way I, I feel about it is if they said that he like kicked him in the knee, maybe I would understand it. But he kicked him in the chest and it's like mm, I don't know about that. Yeah, it's like, yeah, like that's a balance thing. That's an agility thing. Yeah, it's a flexibility mm -hmm. thing. Like, I don't see these idiots doing yoga. I'm just saying. Yeah, like I mean, you don't really like you don't need to be able to like do the splits or anything to kick someone in the chest, but you do have to be able to like get <clears> your <throat> leg up high enough, and it's just the the logistics. Kick them in the chest. Like, yeah. Just it doesn't make sense. I just don't see it. So Vicarnus claims that Euronymous, Vicarnus claims that Euronymous ran into the kitchen to fetch a knife. The two got into a struggle and Vicarnus stabbed Euronymous to death. His body was found in the stairwell on the first floor with 23 stab wounds, two to the head, five to the neck, 16 in the back. And Varg claims his final stab to the skull was so powerful, the knife remained stuck in Euronymous's skull, but no physical evidence or bodily injuries supports this claim. Bruh. Hmm. How fucking, <clears throat> how fucking fragile does he think that the human skull is that his scrawny ass was able to stab through it? You know, yeah. Fucking Varg. Fucking idiots. Yeah, it's, it's not like your skull is, uh, you know, basically like what's keeping your most vital organs safe and is therefore a pretty structurally sound p part of the body and like a oh, whole no, ass not at all. No, not at all. Oh, no. And That's like, definitely yes, not know, okay. Like, yes, I know that anatomically speaking, the skull is in, like, sections and everything, but they're, like, it's one piece! So the skull is in sections the same way that uh, tectonic plates work. It's all together. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Anyways, so Varg contends that most of Euronymous's wounds were caused by broken glass he had fallen on during the struggle. Because, <coughs> you know, broken glass cuts look exactly like stab wounds. Yeah, you know, all of that broken glass was just like the exact same like length, width, and uh -huh. like uh -huh. stabbiness as the knife yeah. that he was using. He was using a knife made out of broken glass. And then he ran into my glass. He ran into my glass 23 times. Backwards. All over the place. But anyways, Vicarnus, uh, after the murder, Vicarnus and Blackthorn drove back to Bergen. And on the way, they stopped at a lake where Vicarnus disposed of his bloodstained clothes. Do you think he just like threw him out into the lake, or do you think he like the good? At, how did he go about that? Like, I mean, that was kind of like what I was thinking. Like the, when I when I heard that, just like, oh yeah, you just yeeted his clothes into the lake, and then drove back home naked. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him. No. They're driving. Blackthorn's just like, you, you know, I, I have some clothes in the, in the back seat. There's like some pants and, and like a, a shirt back there if, if you're interested. And Vikernis, his bare ass just all up on his card. Just like, nah, I think I'm all right.
you you know um i i'm just saying there's like some some new boxers back there you could just put those on if if you want no i don't i don't like to wear i don't like to wear new clothes until after i've washed them once because then you know they're cleaner to put on your body right right yeah of course so the claim of self-defense is doubted by Emperor Drummer Faust because, you know, Faust is the fucking expert here, seeing as he already fucking <laughs> killed someone. <clears throat> yeah, so he would know. Yeah, but Mayhem bassist Necro Butcher believes that Vicanus killed Euronymous due to the aforementioned death threats that he had received from him. A Blackthorn claims that Varg plans to murder Euronymous and pressured him into coming along. He claims that in the summer of 1993, he was almost committed to a mental hospital, but fled to Bergen and stayed with Varg. Blackthorn said of the murder, I was neither for nor against it. I don't give a shit about Oishin. Which, as we remember, was Euronymous's actual name. Yes, we all remembered that. Hmm. Yeah, you didn't remember that, did you? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> However, Varg claims that he had not planned the killing and that Blackthorn came along to show Euronymous some new guitar riffs. Varg called Blackthorn's claims a defense to make sure I didn't blame him for the murder. Varg was arrested on the 19th of August, 1993, in Bergen. The police found 150 kilograms of explosives and 3,000 rounds of ammunition in his home. According to the Encyclopedia of White Power, Vikernes intended to blow up Blitzhaus, the radical leftist and anarchist enclave in Oslo, a plan that was reportedly on the verge of execution. In an article originally published in 1999, Kevin Coogan also mentioned Vikernes' alleged intent to destroy an Oslo-based punk anti-fascist squad called the Blitzhaus, and stated Vikernes may have felt that he had no choice but to kill Euronymous before bombing Blitzhaus because the communist would almost certainly have opposed such an act. Vikernes denied these claims in a 2009 interview saying he was collecting explosives and ammunition in order to defend Norway if we were attacked any time. Cool story. Yeah. Now, Vikernes' trial began on the 2nd of May, 1994, and he was represented by the lawyer Stein Erik Matson. Many other members of the scene, including, including Blackthorn and Faust, were put on trial around the same time. Some of them confessed to their crimes and implicated others. And according to Lords of Chaos, Vikernes is disgusted by the fact that while he held fast to a code of silence, others confessed. Mm -hmm. During the trial, mm, during the trial, the media made Vikernes the nation's real the nation's first real man in 50 years. At the trial, he claimed that he, Blackthorn, and another friend had planned the murder. The court alleged that this third person stayed at the apartment in Bergen as an alibi to make it look like they had never left Bergen. He went to rent films, play them in the apartment, and withdraw money from Vikernes' credit card. On the 16th of May, 1994, Vikernes was sentenced to 21 years in prison, which is Norway's maximum penalty for the murder of Euronymous, the arson of three churches, the attempted arson of a fourth church, and for the theft and storage of 150 kilograms of explosives. Now, though Vikernes only confessed to the theft and storage of the explosives, two churches were set on fire the day he was sentenced presumably as a statement of symbolic support because you know the black metal crew is like hey you guys varg is getting sentenced today what should we do to show him that we support him let's burn down more churches english all right <laughs> i couldn't really get the like the norwegian part in there no anyways so 
In May 1994, there was the release of Mayhem's album, Die Mistress Dom Sa Softness, which has Euronymous on electric guitar and Vikernus on bass guitar. Before the release, Euronymous's family ad had asked Mayhem's drummer, Hellhammer, to remove the bass tracks recorded by Vikernus. Hellhammer said, I thought it was appropriate that the murderer and victim were on the same record. I put word out that I was re-recording the bass parts, but I never did. Wow. Thanks, Hellhammer. Hey, uh, fuck you. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Varg served his sentence at prisons in Bergen, Tronsberg, Ringerke, Trondheim, and Trosmu. And if I am pronouncing any of those wrong, feel free to die to the Patreon. <laughs> Teach me <laughs> how to pronounce Norwegian correctly. Donate to the Patreon so we can take Norwegian lessons. I mean, I have a friend who's taking Norwegian lessons, and she's like, "We need to move to." Okay, okay, no, but she's like, she's like, "We need to move to Norway and like live this whole cottage core life in the woods." And I was just like, like for a while, I was like, "Whatever, maybe," but now after reading all this shit and knowing what I know about Varg, I'm just sort of like, "Ah, mm, uh, no," because the minute I meet Varg, I'm gonna go to prison for 21 years for murdering his ass. <laughs> I would never uh, for the record uh, because this is being filmed I would never actually murder anybody I'd probably just like kick him in the chest <laughs> I'm not even sorry uh, would it be worth the 23 stab wounds yes me Oh, Varg, what are you going to do? Stab me? <laughs> are you going to claim self-defense, Varg? <laughs> Uh-oh, I lost my place. You good? Uh, we're at the end of page four. I don't see the pages. Oh. <laughs> uh, Hello. R.I.P. Anyways, so according oh, to Swedish, it. according to Swedish scholar Matthias Gardell, in his book *Gods of the Blood*, Varg launched the Norwegian Heathen Front, the Norsk Hedensk Front, Norsk Hedensk Front during his early years in prison. Gardell says that this was a pagan neo-Nazi group that grew into the international pan-Germanic heathen front. I'm not even going to fucking try that one. Oh, can I try? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Algermanish heathenish front. Yeah, close enough. Or AHF. According to Xavier Catterinch, the Varg was the self-proclaimed leader of the Norwegian Heathen Front, and the Goodrick and Goodrick Clark mentions that Vikernes underlined his role as chieftain of his Norwegian Heathen Front with the writings of Vargsmal. The Heathen Front officially denied that Varg was in charge. Now, according to Lords of Chaos, this may have been to protect him or not actually Lords of Chaos, according to the writers of Lords of Chaos, who we all know are real big Varg Vikernes fans. Yeah. So they're yeah. not biased yeah. at all. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, but this may have been to protect him as Norwegian prisoners were prohibited from leading political groups. And in addition, the organization's listed address was the same P.O. box that Vikernes used in prison which the author's state would have made it very hard for Varg to do an effective job at leading the organization, as all the letters would have to have been screened by the prison personnel. Varg said, 
I have never formed or been a member of such organizations. The only organization I am a member of is... Oh, fuck me. All right. I'm going to try this one. I'm going to try it after a drink. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take it first. <clears throat> Rick Small or Bunden. Or Bunden. Yeah, I think that's Rick, right. Rick Small. Rick Small. All right. Rick Small's for Bunden. I don't know if the if the A with the little circle above it does the same thing in Norwegian that it does in Swedish, but in Swedish, I'm pretty sure it makes the O sound. I've got a feeling it probably does do the same thing because, like, I mean, it's the same. It's the same type of letter, so I would assume it's yeah. pronounced the same way. And these languages are like of the same origin, basically. They're pretty close, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it's pretty close. Anyways, so it's basically the Society for the Preservation of Traditional Standard Norwegian, which is the Society for the Preservation of White People. Yeah, I was gonna say that sounds like a that sounds like a white supremacist or a nationalist group if I ever heard one. Pretty much. So on the eighth of April, nineteen ninety seven, Norwegian police arrested five neo Nazis in Hemnes. According to the police, the young men were a part of a self styled Eisengruppe, and were plotting attacks on political and religious figures in Norway. They also had plans to break Varga out of prison. The group had all the trappings of a paramilitary unit, including guns, explosives, bulletproof vests, steel helmets, and balaclavas. I definitely read that as baklavas at first, and I was just no. like, what? <laughs> you know, the paramilitary totally has a lot of baklava lying around. What if they, they get snacky? Snack. What if they get snacky for something that's, like, delicious? <laughs> Hello, ladies. Fresh baklava. Oh, God, I'm such a slut for baklava. <laughs> anyway, one of its members, Tom Tom Eitrens, had befriended Varg in prison before escaping while on leave. Varg's mother, Lena Bore, was arrested for supplying the group with over 100,000 kroner. She confessed, but claimed that she did not know that they were right-wing extremists and had said that her son was being attacked by fellow inmates. Okay. In, late, in late 1996, however, his jaw had reportedly been broken in a fight with another inmate. But let's be honest, that inmate was probably just like, shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! No one wants to hear it! You fucking yeah, nerd! Um, um, I've got a feeling that he didn't really get to act in self-defense very much there. I fucking hope not. Yeah, no. I hope he was held down and had the shit beat out of him. I hope that somebody, like, shit on his face. Like, honestly. I just, I hope that happened to him. <laughs> it's like, every time he started with that neo-Nazi shit, I hope they just, like, shit in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> what? Oh God, that just made me think of the South Park movie. Just Estamun Shiza. Alrighty. <laughs> Alrighty. Man, you tell me if you're in a German Shiza video, right? Sure, hon. Good night. What the fuck? Cartman's mom. Is it Cartman's mom? Oh, very funny. Dude, it is Cartman's mom. What? <laughs> oh, have you watched the pandemic special yet? No. Oh my fucking god. I, I don't stay up to date with I don't stay up to date with South Park anymore. I don't either, but I watched it last night because it was on the HBO app and I was fucking dying. <laughs> Anyways, um, so the prison official, uh, the prison director claimed that 
her claims were unfounded and the police suspected that the money had come from Varg himself. Lords of Chaos says that Vikernes adopted a skinhead look and wore a belt buckle with an SS insignia around this time. And despite her confession, Bore was not convicted, and in 1998, the case against the Engstagrupa was dropped. During his time in prison, Vikernes recorded two albums made up of wholly ambient neo-folk music. The first, Dowdy um, Bal- Yes. What does that mean? Uh, Neo folk music? What does that mean? Oh, what? That was weird. <laughs> <clears throat> well, let's see. Um, Dalde Bendos. Let's find out what that means together. <sighs> All right. It's uh he still did it under the title Burzrum, right? So this is the first song from the album that he released in 1994. Uh, it is, oh, or it was released in 1997, but it was recorded in 1994, 1995. Daude Belders. So let me pull this one up. I just found it on YouTube so that we can experience this together. Oh boy. Excited. All right, ready? No, but go ahead. You know what this sounds like to me? What? This sounds like um, like a sleep paralysis monster in a song. Yeah. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> Let's see if there's like any like words. I fucking can't. Ugh. Fucking. That was too much for my. That was too much for my brain. You good? I didn't like that. That's gonna be like. Are you glad that you? Are you glad you asked? No, because now my sleep paralysis demon has a theme song. (laughs) Yup. Do do. Big fucking honk out of nowhere. (laughs) Oh god. Alright, so the second is I'm not even gonna fucking try with that one. Anyway, (laughs) Kate, your turn. You try with that one. Lead scalp? Sure, why not? That was recorded. I don't in know how you pronounce that weird D thing. Yeah, no idea. It was recorded in 1998 and released in April 1999. Varg was denied access to an electric guitar, bass, or drums, and instead used a synthesizer. In 2000, Varg decided to put Burzrum on hold. He believed that his philosophy was constantly misinterpreted by an ignorant fan base that was too closely related to black metal and Satanism. Later, through his website, his website he indicated that he hoped to continue Burzrum after his release from prison, stating, I will publish a few books, possibly using a pseudonym in order to, to stay anonymous, and perhaps a Burzrum album or two, but that's it. In yes, August- it's your fan base. 
it's your fan base that is um that's ignorant yeah in august 2003 varg was transferred from the maximum security prison in bergen to the low security prison in chomsberg on october 15th the local paper chomsberg bald published an article that criticized varg on the 26th of october varg went on to run went on the run after being granted a short leave. He stopped a car in Neumendal and inside was a family of three who said that he hijacked the car at gunpoint. After about 19 hours, the police stopped the car in Romreich and arrested him. The, yeah. car con the car contained knives, a gas mask, camouflage clothing, a portable GPS navigator, maps, a compass, a laptop, and a mobile phone. The police also found a handgun and an AG-3 automatic rifle in a cabin in Rolag, where Vikernes had hidden during his escape. They concluded that his escape was well-planned and involved assistance with several people on the outside. And before the escape, Varg gave his mother a letter. In it, he wrote that he had received death threats and another inmate had tried to strangle him shortly after the newspaper article was printed. Hmm... For his actions, 13 months were added to Varg's sentence, and he was moved to a prison in Ringerich. In July 2004, he was moved to a maximum security prison in Trondheim, and the last three years of his sentence were spent in Trosmo prison. When Varg was convicted, it was possible to be released on parole after serving 12 of a 21-year sentence. But in 2002, before he became eligible, the Norwegian Parliament had extended this to 14 years. Hey. In, July, in July 2006, after serving 12 years, Varg was denied parole by the Department of Criminal Justice for that reason. Sucks to <laughs> suck. Yeah, right. Seriously. <laughs> there were The Parliament was literally just like, oh, shit, you know who gets the possibility of parole in like a year? No, you think we're keeping track of that? Yeah, it's Varg Vakerus. Oh, fuck. You, you know what? I think we should, like, give, like, two more years. What do you think? Like, we, we can, like, extend that, right? Like, let's just pass a law. Yeah, I mean, we can change the rules whenever we feel like it. Yeah, let's just, like, do that. So they just like go to like the head of parliament or whatever, and they're like, "Hey, so we want to change these rules. Can can we do that?" And the head of parliament's like, "No. Why would you want to do that?" And they're like, "Well, because Varg Vakernes will be eligible for parole in like in like a year." And then they're just like, "Oh shit, really? That's already coming up." Yeah, it's been twelve. It's been eleven years since he went to prison. We really need to make sure that um, that we get at least two more years without his fucking bullshit on the outside. Just, just give me a thing. I will sign it. You fill in the details. We literally wrote it on a napkin while we were eating lunch. Can you? Can can? Will this work? Is it in pen? Yes. Give me a pen. Just ignore that little ketchup stain right there, okay? That indicates where I am to sign. Yeah, yeah, it does. Here's your pen, sir. Thank you for my pen. Wonderful. He has to wait two more years, at least. Varg, meanwhile, somewhere. My rights, they're being ignored. Help, help, I'm being repressed. I'm not being repressed hard enough. Or was that the other guy? No, that was still Varg. Okay. Yeah, no, that was still Varg. He wasn't being repressed hard enough uh, in the first prison that he went to. Or like, oh. not even that long. I couldn't remember if that was him or Euronymous. No, no, that was Varg. Euronymous never actually went to prison, as far as I can tell, but... Anyways, so his lawyer, John Christian Elden, had complained that the policy change is a form of retroactive legislation 
and Article 97 of the Norwegian Constitution forbids any law being given retroactive force. But he was denied parole again in 2008, although he was allowed to leave Tromso prison for short periods to visit his family. And his full sentence would run another seven years. And you know those two lawmakers, those two were just sort of like, hey, you know who's getting out of prison, but we should like call the prison officials, you know, we should like call the parole board and like let's bribe them with some wine and and um chocolates. They're just like, oh shit, yeah. They love chocolates. Yeah, let's let's like bribe they like call the the parole board, they're like, hey, um, we have a big basket of wine and chocolates. And, you know, it's so much wine and chocolates that we can't actually finish all of it. So we were wondering if you wanted this entire basket for free. And they're just, like, on the phone, like, they're listening to this, and they're just like... <laughs> right? Okay, so the only thing you need to do, uh, so Vard Vikmith is up for parole, right? Uh huh. Yeah, so we really don't want him to come back. So if you could just like make sure that he doesn't get parole this time, then you get all of this wine and chocolates for free. For completely free. For completely free. I and will like even good, drive it to you. And it's like a good size basket? It's not like a little baby basket, like some bullshit? No, no. This basket is like as big as my five-year-old child. You're not fucking with me right now, are you? I'll send you a picture. It'll take like 16 hours to get there because the internet is really slow right now. But I'll send it to you. Okay, you send me the picture and like yeah. show me like a picture like of you next to the basket so I know it's you with the basket. Right. And then I'll call you back with my answer. Oh. Okay, all right, sounds good. All right, all right, I'm gonna take this picture, sends the picture. Shows up, just. Oh shit, this is legit shows it to like shows it to like his family just like do you see this fucking basket yeah oh my god that basket's amazing what are you going to do with it I'm going to eat it okay but like what do you have to do to get the basket how much does it cost it costs me zero dollars and one man's freedom which man Is it Varg? Yeah. Just that that guy, you know, that black metal guy, Varg Vikirnis. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember him. Oh, his freedom. Oh, it was totally fine. That guy's like a Nazi now. Right? Exactly my thoughts. So it's like a win-win. We keep a Nazi in prison and we get free chocolate and wine. That sounds amazing. Call the guy. Call him right now. Okay. I'm going to call him right now. We're getting free chocolate and wine. That's amazing. I'm so excited. That so, is word for word exactly what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in March 2009, unfortunately, his parole was announced. And we assume it can only be because the guy who was so into the chocolate and wine uh, got a new job. <laughs> He left that job, like, fighting tooth and nail. No, no, I have to keep Varg Vikernes out of, out of society. Why do you need to keep Varg Vikernes out of society? For the wine and the chocolate. What are you talking about? The wine and the chocolate. Pulls up picture of the basket. Holy shit, that's a big fucking basket. Do you see you, why I denied his parole? Do you eat all of that chocolate? It lasts me about a year. I savor it. 
And then the next year that you get another basket of chocolates and wine. Exactly. Every year we keep them in prison. I get another basket. Oh, that sounds fucking awesome. All right, I'm taking this job now, yeah. No, I want to keep this job. No, no, you're being promoted. It's fine. Oh. With it's your promotion, you get it. like you get like a fifty more kroner, so you can buy your own baskets of wine and chocolates. Yes, but then I have to do that. I have to buy the wine and the chocolate. Yeah, I, I get that, but uh, I'm totally taking your job now. So bye. You son of a bitch. <laughs> so anyways, he <laughs> his parole was announced, and by then he had served nearly 15 years of his 21-year sentence. And on the 22nd of May 2009, he confirmed that he had been released from prison and was on probation. Varg continued with Burzum after his release. He released a further three black metal albums, Belus, Fallen, and Umskatar. Um, ums... Hmm. Umskipitar. Norwegian. Umskipitar. Uh, anyways, and a compilation of re-recorded songs from Depths of Darkness. And on the 27th of April, 2013, Varg posted a song on his official YouTube channel titled Back to the Shadows, which Varg has stated to be the last metal track to be, be to be released by Burzerum. What a fucking shame. Yeah. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. No more. No more Varg metal. No more of that aluminum bullshit. <laughs> So in May 2013, he released another ambient album, your favorite, Kate. I don't like it! <laughs> another ambient album, so all the man is And in July 2012, Varg created a YouTube channel under the name Thalion Perspectives, or Thalion Perspective, uh, which is like some fucking Lord of the Rings spelling and shit. Like, it's ridiculous but the channel mostly dealt with european pagan mythology and his political views and in 2013 varg and his wife released a film called four bears based on bear worship during the time of neanderthals which according to him is connected with autism gonna let that sink in there for a minute i know for a fact I know for a fact that we have autistic viewers of this show. I would like you to be aware of the fact that Varg Vikernes thinks that worshipping bears is connected with autism. Reactions? Um. Oh yeah, that's not the only thing that he has to say about autism. What was that thing that I sent to you, Kate? Yeah, uh, let's find that. I don't that, know. Yeah, let's find that picture that I sent to you because I was mad about it. I was high-key mad about this. Um, this is actually from this year. This is from February 27th. I don't have a picture of it, um, but you can find it on Varg's Twitter because it's public. So anyways, because Varg is still active on Twitter. He tweeted, autism is a diagnosis, but what if not having autism is an actual diagnosis? Being autistic means that you are untamed, wild, and free. Being a normie means that you are tamed and enslaved and subdued. I think the unbroken Native European, Nordic in parentheses, man is by default autistic and then it's a picture of his face i'm not even kidding he tweeted that caption with a picture of his fucking face hey just hmm. 
so as somebody who okay my younger brother is autistic and while i am of the opinion that it is something that should along with like any other neurodiversity like should not be stigmatized and should be more accommodated in the neurotypical world Mm -hmm. no yeah uh kate i'm gonna teach you how to say something really quick in norwegian okay and i think that you're gonna actually really like to know this when we're talking about varg especially in the next few minutes so just repeat after me okay what eat shit not quite just repeat after me fein say it again fein fein deg deg fein deg fein deg that means fuck you oh wonderful wonderful yeah you're welcome that put a very genuine smile on my face like oh I'm very happy to know that. Van Degvard. Yeah, so let's continue. So, you want to go ahead and give it a try real quick there, Kate? Just see if you remember. Uh, Van. Oh, I thought I was like reading something. No, no, no. <laughs> I was like, I don't see it anywhere. <laughs> Fan Dag. Fan Dag Varg. So, <clears throat> Varg was on, was uh, one of the recipients of a far right terrorist manifesto written by Anderson Bering Breivik, which Breivik sent out before launching the 2011 Norway attacks, killing 11 people. Now, although Varg seven, condemned Breivik at its actions. This drew the attention of the French authorities. Now, at this point, Varg had been living in France with his wife, a French national, and they were arrested at their homes in Crazy, France, on suspicion of planning acts of terrorism after his wife bought four rifles. Officials later stated that Varg's wife had a legal firearms permit to buy the rifles, and the two were later released without charge after police failed to identify any terrorist plans or targets. Varg was instead charged by French authorities with inciting racial hatred against Jews and Muslims, which is a criminal offense in France. So, Good job, fuck France. Yeah, France. Fuck yeah, we stand. We stand. So there, this was all due to posts on his blog, Julian Perspective, which included anti-Semitic rants that were taken down following the charges. Varg claims that he had not written the posts, although the blog attributed all posts to him. On the 8th of July, 2014, Varg was convicted of inciting racial hatred and sentenced to six months of probation and a fine of 8,000 euro. Fan bag. In July 2018, really should have a stronger penalty. In July 2018, Varg made comments that he had moved on from Burzrim on his YouTube channel, saying bye bye to the project. Varg's YouTube channel was then removed from the platform in June 2019. This coincided with an announcement from YouTube that it would be more aggressive in removing extremist content and hate speech that violated its terms of service. Varg said that he did not know exactly why his channel was removed, and within hours he had created a new channel and said that he would continue to post content. But that channel was also removed. In late 2019, Varg announced on his Twitter that he intended to release another album as Burzrum. Because of course he did. Because why would he fucking give up Burr's Room? It's the only thing that gives him any form of like purpose. Yeah, no, not even that. Just notoriety. Mm. 
Because if so, nobody's talking about him, he will waste away to nothing. And good God, we wouldn't mm-hmm. want that. So the the album is titled The Thulian Mysteries, and the album was released in March of this year, 2020. And Varg has indicated that this will be his last album under the Burr's Room name, but we've fucking heard that one before, haven't we? Yeah, right? God, yeah. if 2020 couldn't have gotten any worse, now we have this bit of knowledge. Yep. So here's what happened. March 2020. That's when the shutdown happened, by the way. So Varg released an album, and then we all got stuck inside of our houses for like seven months. I'm not saying that Varg caused the shutdown, but I'm not saying that Varg didn't cause the shutdown. Yeah, I'm not saying he did it, but I am not a big believer in coincidences. Anyways, so in 1994, while in prison, Varg wrote a Norwegian language book called Vargsmål, which is also in English is translated to Varg's speech. Varg said that he wrote Vargsmål to defend himself against the media. And according to Lords of Chaos, Varg Small became available on the internet for some time in 1996, but not in printed form. In 1997, a Norwegian publisher released a paperback edition of its book, and its publication was financed by Varg's mother, uh, Helene. So there's different there's different accounts to what his mom's actual name is. It's either Helene or Elene. Borg. No idea. I am just of the opinion that that the book is literally just like Norwegian translated into another language and it's him trying to claim that he invented the Norwegian language. I mean, I could read some shit off of his website, but like honestly, it makes me want to claw my fucking eyes out. Yeah, let's not give his website the hits. No. Anyways, so as of 1999, Varg Small was being sold by the neo-Nazi organization Heathen Front via its website. So whatever you do, do not fucking buy this book because Nazis are selling it. In 1998, he wrote another book called Germanist Mythology of Ver- Mm-hmm. Verden Sanskrisi. Vergen, Vergen, Verden Sanskrit. Yeah. Vergen, Verden, not G. There's no G. Verden Sanskrit. Which is basically a tectonic mythology and worldview. In 2011, Abstract Sound Books published Varg's English book entitled Sorcery and Religion in Ancient Scandinavia about the religious practices of Scandinavian peoples, particularly during the Stone Age and Bronze Age. According to a review from the music blog, Heathen's Harvest, the book rejects accepted academic theories, instead focusing on Varg's speculation and personalized storytelling. By late late 2003, Varg had begun writing articles for Burzerum.org, which became the official Burzerum website. And that's the website that I had mentioned before, the one that we will not give the hits to because fuck that guy. I've already forgotten how to say it. What? Fuck you. Oh, uh, uh, oh my God. I pulled it up. Hang on. I can't. Uh, it's a uh, sand egg. Fayan. Fandag. Fandag. Hey, Varg. Fandag. Anyways, so he also wrote for his personal blog, Thelen Perspective, which was set up in January 2013. The website Ancestral Cult was created by him and his wife. 
Varg has also self-published a tabletop role-playing game named My Tharog, and in 2019, he announced plans to release an ambient album of Burr's Room. Oh, wait, we already said that. Yeah, he uh, released that <laughs> fucking album. What? What? Just the way that it's spelled. I'm just like, the game is called My Farog. Yeah, My Farog. Also, the album that he released this year in uh, 2020. Yeah, so that's intended as background music for the game. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. But, like, like, the name of the game, I'm just like, mm, yes, this is My Farag. My Farag. His name you know, is... You I, I, I just, I, I have to show the audience how this is actually spelt. So, let me just, really quick. Where is it? My... Okay. So this is actually the literal spelling for this game right here down below. Right there. Yeah. My Farog. Oh my God. Uh, it's my Farog. Meanwhile, they're listening to the ambient music of Burr's room. Just, yeah. 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 Uh, anyways, so in Metal, a, hang, a Headbanger's Journey, director Sam Dunn described Varg as the most notorious metal musician of all time due to his crimes as well as his political and religious views. While in prison, Varg promoted views which combined Odinism and esoteric Nazism. Religious study scholar Eagle Asterm er, characterized Varg as... Oh. Sorry. You good? Yeah, sorry. My notes fell and hit a ceramic mug. But anyways, they uh they characterized Varg as an ideal for skinheads with an inclination towards paganism and for contemporary pagans with an inclination towards national socialism. In a 2005 statement on his website, Varg wrote that although he had occasionally used the term Nazism, to describe his ideological foundation, he no longer describes himself as such. Mm. He had used the term following his 1994 conviction until the late 1990s, and among other things, he did not wish to be associated with anti-Slavic sentiment. Since the late 1990s, he has described his views as odalism, which he says encompasses paganism, traditional nationalism, racial, racialism, and environmentalism. He also advocates social conservatorism, simple living, and self-sufficiency. He has described his own ideology, ideology fiercely as anti-modern, and according to Eric Brown, writing for the International Business Times, Varg opposed anything that anything deemed a threat to a pre-industrial European pagan society, including but not limited to Christianity, Islam, Judaism, capitalism, and materialism. He also rallies against a perceived international Jewish conspiracy to destroy the traditional European identity. Okay. Hmm. Varg is a fucking idiot. Huh. I just, I, I, I just, the, just, you know, just two words. Just two fucking words. Fucking guy. <laughs> oh my god. Fucking guy. Oh, I am so tired. Yeah. So, Varg wrote a blog post sympathetic to some of the views of Anderson during Breivik but said that he suspected Breivik carried out his terrorist attack as a part of a Jewish conspiracy. He condemned Breivik for killing innocent Norwegians and called him a Christian loser, saying that the only way to save Europe is to cast aside all Christian and other international nonsense and embrace only the European pagan values and ideals. Fucking guy. My dude. Mm. So. Yeah. 
so unsubtle. Varg unfortunately has a bunch of kids now. Ew. Varg has a son who was born in 2007 to his now wife, Marie Cachet. They were born the same year, and in a 2008 interview, he said that he and his wife were expecting a second child, which was Varg's third. After his release, he and the family settled on a small farm in Beau, Telemark. They later moved to Limousin, France, and as of 2017, he said that he had six children and planned to have more. And in July of this year, he announced on Twitter that his wife was pregnant with her seven child. Varg also does not believe in, he's a, what's called a teetotaler. He's never consumed alcohol or other recreational drugs and avoids the unnecessary use of pharmaceutical drugs. So this guy is just a fucking bummer all the way around. Listen, I'm all about sobriety. Like, if you are a sober person, more power to you. But, like, don't... If you're a sober Nazi, you're still a fucking Nazi. Yeah, um... You don't get to be better than other people just because you are sober. Like, it's... Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Varg. We're better than you in literally every way. So I've been on Varg's Twitter a little bit uh, the past couple of days. I hate it there. I hate it so much. Um, but let's look at a screenshot of him talking, like, you know, trying to drag uh, J.R.R. Tolkien down as well. So Tolkien oh is a Christian. I hear it all the time. Yes, I'm sure he was. He had to be. Everyone around him expected him to be and even demanded that he was. He had no choice. Like a scholar today trying to keep his job has to be anti-racist. His books show where his heart was. My guy. Varg. What the fuck? You <laughs> Bruh, do you know when Tolkien was writing? Yeah, right. Seriously. Um, and then there's this next tweet that I found of Varg's. Now, this is going to be kind of small, so I'm going to read it again. Um, I hate this. Oh, God, that's really small. I'm so sorry. But anyway, so what it says is, I would love to see all Palestinians return to Palestine. And regarding the Israelis and Jews, well, I cannot legally speak what I want for them. Why do you call me a liar? Wash your mouth, Semite. P.S. Your men are cowards running away rather than fight. Fucking Varg. Hey, uh... I hate him. Hey, lot. Varg. I am Dag. Van Dag. Seriously. Fucking hate this guy. I don't know who I hate more, Varg or Gary Ridgway, but they're pretty close right now. Yeah, it's... It's a close call, because, like... Varg is, like, an overall terrible person and, like, stands by it. Gary Ridgway mm-hmm. was a terrible person and a... I, I don't know if he's still alive, but Gary Ridgway... Yes. Okay, well, Gary Ridgway is a terrible person and a fucking idiot to boot. Yep. Are you ready to watch the trailer for Lords of Chaos, by the way? Oh, this came out last- I was hoping you would have forgotten about that because I did. Nope, we're gonna watch it. This came out last year. And like honestly, I feel like uh, we have told the story. We have told this story way better than the fucking makers of this movie have. So let's watch this bullshit. <laughs> yeah. An average teenager to me. <laughs> but you couldn't be more wrong. I am the founder of Mayhem, the most infamous black metal band in the world. We are the Lords of Chaos. Life was easy back then. It was all about having fun 
drinking beer, and playing hard and loud music. And then everything changed. Varg. Lone Wolf. Varg. The Lone Wolf. Base player of Mayhem. We have to take this to the next level. Hey, you said it yourself. We should burn them all down. If you do this, we're free. He did it. Not split. A terror has swept across Norway. The police have described the murder as extremely violent. Either you do it for the cause, and you take action, or you do it because you want attention. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> the suspect known as the Count has You pretend to be my friend. You can hit me off guard. <laughs> Why do you care about him so much? I thought you were true Norwegian black metal. I meant it. And now you betray it. <laughs> no. You have this dream, this vision. You were in control. You were a leader. <laughs> so could be all of those things if you wanted to. Everyone uh, got some <laughs> Let's go! Do it. What? Pull the trigger. Hi, Pell, it's Dad. We're going to the summer house, and we would love it if you come. that's the trailer from what i understand and what i've heard the uh the closest um the the closest like portrayal was done uh by dead the guy who played dead got it yeah uh, gotta love the girl that's like yelling at at um at Euronymous for not being black metal enough. His girlfriend. Yeah, that was a uh, that was uh that was cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. But anyways, uh, that is a movie that Thea and I are going to be watching and discussing on Patreon because that is some fucking bullshit. Um, I love that literally none of them have Norwegian accents except for the- like, Yeah, I was like, why do they country. all sound American? Yeah. yeah, they all sound American. None of them have accents. Yeah, I thought that was real funny. I was just like, I'm from a small town in Norway. We play black metal, and all it was was playing music and drinking beer. Yeah, I haven't even been able to keep my my accent straight, but I was better than they were. Yeah. Even even your deacon was better than their Norwegian. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a weird slip. That was like... I sunk way too far into that. That was so funny. Yeah, it was pretty fucking funny. It really was. Um, but yeah, that is that is the Norwegian black metal scene. It's a fucking mess, or it was in the nineties. I don't fucking know what it's like now. I don't. I don't really do Norwegian black metal these days. And that's okay. Hmm. I like metal. I do. I like death metal. I like thrash metal. I like all kinds of different metal. I just generally try not to. I, it's not that I try not to. I just I don't enjoy black metal. Not after all of this shit. I just yeah, especially enjoy. not now. I I just can't enjoy it. I can't. Um, but if you enjoyed this show and this content, feel free to support us down here below. My Venmo is at Dakota's Beard. Kate's is Kate Ulrich 42. Or you can support the show at patreon.com forward slash short and hey, PC. That's C-H-A-R-D-O-N-H-A-A-A-Y-P-C. <coughs> Excuse me. I breathed wrong. <laughs> I don't you hate it when that happens when you like you take a, a breath in and then it just like hits wrong and you're like, well, I'm gonna cough. 
just ah, wrong, wrong direction. Yeah, it's yep. Anyways, so God. But I want to say this: if we start making enough money, we will start doing skits of ourselves being interviewed as these fucking idiots uh, that we cover. Um. And just make them look like the biggest fucking idiots that they are. And I mean, we've been able to do that on the fly. So just imagine how much better it'll be when we sit down and plan it. Oh my god. Just imagine how good it's going to be when it's like actually scripted. It'll be like a short video, but still. So check out our Patreon. Keep an eye out for that happening. Because that's going to be a whole lot of fun. I'm going to be a whole lot of something. <laughs> but anyways, uh, we hope that you enjoyed tonight. Again, sorry that we weren't able to do this all live, but we hope you still had fun. And until next time, say goodnight, Kate. Good night, Kate. Good night. And we will be back next week when we talk about the murder of Ted Binion. Now that's going to be oh. done. It's going to be really exciting because we are actually going to be on location in Las Vegas while we talk about a Las Vegas true crime. This will be the first time that I'm leaving my room. Exactly. Because, you know, I haven't done that enough in the past fucking two months. <laughs> My brother said to me, he goes, I feel like you go down to San Diego like twice a month to try and help get Kate get her life in order. So now my family's starting to notice. All right. I guys. have no comment except thank you. Uh, all right, we will see you guys on Tuesday. Say again. So, good night, everyone. Bye bye.